the day of judgment. Thee alone do we worship and thee alone do we beseech. Good afternoon. It's indeed an honor and a privilege for me to have been invited to be a part of this program uh, today. It's indeed an honor also and a privilege for me to bring you greetings, not only from the 400,000 citizens of Gifford County, but I also bring you greetings on behalf of the oldest, the largest, the most talked about, the most feared, the most hated, yet still the most respected and most effective civil rights organization on earth, the NAACP. And I bring you special greetings on behalf of the North Carolina State Conference of NAACP branches, where I'm proud to serve as the president of that organization. And it's indeed an honor for us to have uh, Dr. Muhammad in our area uh, today. Uh, he's a legend within his own right, and not to mention all of the sacrifices and commitments that his father has uh, given to America. So it's a good day uh, for Greensboro to have him in our midst. And, uh, and I'd like for him to come back again and, and kind of tour the city and stay a little, a little while longer. I also have to apologize for leaving early. I won't be able to hear him speak. I have one of my employees, our son, that got killed the other day, and he's, they're having his funeral at 1.30. So if you will forgive me for not staying, I would appreciate that. Again, thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Next, we'll have greetings from Claudette Burroughs White, City Council Member. Hi, John Skip Austin, and welcoming all of you here today. Um, greetings on behalf of the City of Greensboro. I understand that our Mayor Pro Tem, Yvonne Johnson, officially welcomed Dr. Muhammad this morning uh, at the breakfast, but uh, I'm here to say welcome again. It's a privilege to have you back in Greensboro. I had the pleasure of meeting and hearing him a couple of years ago. And um, I want to say that since meeting you a couple of years ago, it's made a tremendous difference in my life. Uh, I got to meet Iman Nurinen, and I've been able to um, understand and appreciate and to, I think, serve better in Greensboro because I understand the diversity and I understand the uh, reason that we can all work together to make this a better community. And I want to say that I've had that support uh, since you were here, and it was what you instructed folk to do, and they've been obedient. And I wanted to share that with you today. I also greet all of you uh, who are visiting uh, to hear this great man um, on behalf of the over 223,000 people who live in Greensboro, North Carolina. It is a great city, and it is a great city because we are working together to unify this community and to make it a wonderful place for everybody to live and enjoy. God bless you and be good. Thank you. Next we'll have Terrence Muhammad to give greetings from the students here at NC A and T University. Terrence Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent and the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. I once again like to greet everyone in greeting words of peace and paradise of As-salamu alaykum. How's everyone doing? We should be fine because we have the blessings of Almighty God Allah on us today. And I'm here not representing myself. I'm here representing the Muslim Student Association here on campus um, in behalf of my president, our president, um, Sister Sajda who was not able to attend today. And on behalf of the Muslim Student Association and some other clubs that I'm a part of, um, such as the History Club, um, some other community clubs and, and the city, we welcome um, the Imam here, not only in the city, but on our campus. And the reason why I can boldly stand that, because I uh, attended a and and as the students here, we're known for our activism and our directness and our flair for um, intellect and, and knowledge, and we seek knowledge, as it says, from the cradle to the grave. And we're here to welcome our brother because we know that Islam, as the Muslim Student Association, is a new organization, not in the nation, but on this campus. We're striving here to make a, a campus and not just 
for us, our students, a campus of peace, because we know that Islam is peace. And our way of doing things on campus, we want to spread the, the vision of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, of love and a humanitarian way of life that he lived amongst the student population. And the Muslim Student Association is here to offer guidance and to enlighten the student body on Islam. And we're here today in lieu of everything that's happened. You know, sometimes we think in the darkest hour there's no light. But also in the darkest hour is where creation comes. So in this dark hour, we know that a light has started to span, which is causing a new creation I see on this campus, and that's the spread of Islam. And not only Islam, because we're not here to quote unquote overshadow, overpower nobody, but as we believe, we're trying to give people back their own nature and give them back to their own selves. Yeah. And we know that their own selves is to submit to God, to be in oneness with God, and we want the whole campus to be in oneness with God as we want the whole city to be in oneness with God because we know there was four freshmen in 1960 that sat down at Woolworths and caused a whole nationwide change and we here as Muslim students want to affect a change not only on our campus but in the city and eventually throughout the world. So on behalf of um, our president, Sister Saja from the Muslim Student Association, we welcome with open hearts, and we thank the Imam for coming to grace and bless our campus with the blessings of Allah's words and guidance to us. And for my fellow students that may be here, um, these greetings only means peace be unto you. And if anyone knows us on campus, you know that we're always a cheerful, loving, smiling, and a peaceful people. And that's what we want to give, and that's why we have the brother here today to give that blessing that he's given to us, to you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Terrence. Next, we'll have Imam Nuruddin to introduce Imam W. Dean Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. In God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Just prior to me doing this, let's got so many uh, good people and noted people uh, in the audience here today from various parts of the country. Um, many in the association of Imam W.D. Muhammad and, and some who are not. Um, let me recognize the Imams that I hear first, those Imams that are in the audience. Would you, would you all just please stand up for us all? Mm, great. This uh, body uh, of men who are here today, Mukhtar Muhammad is here, uh, Pleman Alameen, Mukhtar Muhammad, Pleman Alameen, uh, Omar Shaheed, David Hassan. Oh, my son, I'm missing here. Yeah. These are members of the uh, uh, Islamic Affairs Council. It is a voice uh, in Muslim American society that is concerned about Islamic content and where we're going based on the Quran and the traditions of our Prophet, the prayers and the peace be upon him. We also have uh, Sister by Sima uh, Salat, who is uh, secretary to Imam W.D. Muhammad here, sitting with us here on the end. And uh, um, also Matu La Yumini, who is a steering committee member of the Muslim American Society monitoring team. And we all know, those of you in North Carolina, you know uh, Sheikh Kenneth Muhammad, who has uh, been the pioneer, really, to open up this state for most all of us. He uh, made that transition from following um, the father of Imam W.D. Muhammad to, to today, and following uh, Imam W.D. Muhammad today. So he has been a trailblazer and a pioneer, he and his wife, uh, Sister Margaret, to opening up uh, this state for us. Also, we have Munir Muhammad here, who is the state representative uh, for the Imams in the state of North Carolina. And you heard from uh, Imam Vernon Farid, who is the representative of Imams in this mid-Atlantic section. Also, Adam Bia and his wife. 
just came in. And I see um, uh, Wahid, Abdul Hafiz Wahid, he and his wife are here. And this is uh, Sir Dr. Lincoln's uh, widow is here, brother, you ma'am. She's back there in the back, yeah. Dr. Sierra Lincoln's widow is here. Yes, would you please stand for us, ma'am? And, and he coined us black Muslims and really put us on the map uh, in this country. And many more people who have traveled from quite some distance. Imam Mustafa Shaka from Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, is here. And uh, uh, Salahuddin, Imam Salahuddin, uh, Hassan Salahuddin from uh, Statesville, North Carolina. So we're happy to have you all here with us today. We thank you. And to Claudette, we thank you uh, for being here. We see the press is here today. Um, I'm, I'm about like you are, wanting to hear uh, what's going to be said too. And uh, we're sure that it's going to be uh, something relevant to what's going on today, beyond a shadow of a doubt. What the Imam is going to do is speak for a while and then he will take questions uh, from the audience. He said that he will take questions from the audience. Imam W.D. Muhammad was born to the Honorable Elijah Poole and Clara Muhammad on October 30th, 1933, after the passing of his father, the founder and builder of the Nation of Islam on February 25th, 1975. He has represented Muslims in America, in Oxford, England, at the World Parliament of Religious Leaders for the Survival of the Earth, and at the signing of the Williamsburg Charter, along with former U.S. Presidents in Williamsburg, Virginia, serving on the advisory panel for religious freedom abroad, formed by Secretary of State, or previous Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright. He helped to promote religious freedom in the U.S. and abroad. In the July 7th, 1999 issue of the Wall Street Journal, an article cited the growing number of Muslims in the Muslim American society under his leadership. They are estimated to be at least 2.5 million people today. On February 5th, 1992, Imam Muhammad addressed officials, Muslim and military chaplains, and had a tour of the Pentagon with Muhammad Ali. The very next day, February 6th, he delivered an historical invocation in the U.S. Senate ever given by a Muslim. On March 3rd, 1992, he delivered an address on the floor of the Georgia State Legislature, the state where his father was born. On September 10th, 1992, President Husni Mubarak presented him with Egypt's highest religious honor, the Gold Medal of Recognition for his religious work in America. He received the same award again in 1993. Imam Muhammad has many historical firsts. In 1993, he gave an Islamic prayer at the first inaugural interfaith prayer service of President William Jefferson Clinton, and again in 1997 at Clinton's second inaugural interfaith prayer and service. And he sits on various boards, and he has had the opportunity of being in the presence, quite naturally, of world leaders throughout the globe. He is your brother. He is my brother. He is the leader of many of us. And he is here to share with us today in his own way what he thinks that we need to know that will benefit us as a public. Our brothers and sisters and friends, Imam W.D. Muhammad. Thank you, praise be to Allah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. We praise God, the one and only, as is said in our holy book, the Quran, your God and our God is one and the same. And that is said to what we call in our Islamic language and tradition, the people of the book. The people of the book are Christians and Jews and also some people, other people, uh, called Sabians or Sabians in the 
the Middle East, and I thought that was a religion that had gone from the earth, but there are still followers of that religion. And, and really, it, speaking to any who have a, a legitimate religion, a genuine religion, that is, they recognize God, supreme power over all things, and they feel accountable to that God. They feel that their behavior will have to please that God if they expect to have a good life and life for many, like Christians and, and, and Muslims and some others, life hereafter, a life eternally. <clears throat> I want to acknowledge, firstly, support that we have gotten from this area, from imams in this area, and also from uh, Imam and Dr. Uh, Newt Dean. And you all are doing a very excellent job. We're certainly proud of your work in Carolina. All of you are doing a very excellent job. <clears throat> and I want to also say to you that I just uh, attended uh, a few days ago in Chicago, northwest side of Chicago, in a big, maybe the most impressive mosque, um, uh, Masjid, House of Worship for Muslims, uh, that we have in the Midwest area. And uh, the person that heads that mosque, and really, he was a civil engineer and architect, uh, he designed it, and uh, over, he over, uh, saw the construction of it, and approved, had to approve, approve, approve every detail and everything. You would never know that that man had that kind of uh, career and that kind of interest if you got to know him as a person, because he, he's very pious and very spiritual. Uh, his whole life is just God, obeying God, for God, obeying God. I met him at my father's house, along with about 20 or 21, I think it was 21, uh, young uh, m uh, Muslim men who had come to the United States from Islamic countries to f get education from the universities, some fine universities in our country. And they asked to meet with my father because they wanted to know uh, why is his religion called Islam and is so different from what they know, from what uh, they, they knew to be Islam. So they asked for a meeting with him, and you wouldn't believe it, well, I guess you might. Uh, they came out happy. My father knew how to talk to people. <laughs> he knew what to say to make them happy. So they came out happy, and they had faith that my father intentions, my father's intentions were good, and that uh, he was leading what my father quote said, called the baby nation of Islam in America and that uh, that nation would uh, one day not be a baby, it would be a grown up. And they were believing my father uh, and uh, hoping to see, they were all young men, all young men, mostly in their 20s, early 20s and mid, about mid 20s, they wanted to see one day his following join the worldwide following of Muhammad the Prophet, prayers and peace be upon Muhammad the Prophet, and that has happened. Um, anyway, we had this meeting, interfaith meeting, in the Villa Park Mosque um, of, of Chicago, Illinois. And uh, it was arranged by my office and Dr. Shuler and his, and his office, Robert H., Dr. Robert H. Shuler, the one with the Our Power TV ministry. Um, and Dr. Shula spoke on that program. Uh, the program intended to put in the air and give to the press the fact, backed up by our scriptures, that terrorism is not accepted by Christianity and is not accepted by Islam. So we joined each other. Dr. Shula and W. Dean Muhammad joined each other along with other religious leaders and there were a few rabbis too present. Uh, 
to make that statement. <clears throat> Minister Farrakhan was invited also, and Minister Farrakhan made a statement. And I have known him, in fact, I think of Minister Farrakhan before I think of him as a minister, all, and that's his, you know, his uh, powerful image is as Minister Farrakhan, a minister. But because I grew up as a young student minister, uh, and uh, with the same time, at the same time, Minister Farrakhan also was growing up as a young student minister. And when we became ministers, we, we were associates and friends. I visited his home as a friend and he has visited my home as a friend. <clears throat> so I think of him firstly as a person that I have personal acquaintance with, as a friend. Um, and when he finished his speech, I came up after Dr. Shula and I said, if you keep talking like that, I'll be your follower. <laughs> That's how much I was impressed. No, no, uh, no, nothing he said caused any discomfort to me. I was very happy to see him say what he said. And I'm not going to say it. You, you'll probably get the news from the journal, Muslim Journal, our newspaper, our weekly newspaper, and uh, from their uh, weekly newspaper, the final call. Uh, and from other, I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to say what he said at this time. I rather that, I rather that others give it to you. Um, <clears throat> but all he said was good. It was very good. He said some things that I perhaps wouldn't, wouldn't say myself, uh, warning the uh, powers that be, uh, that uh, we all are answerable to God, the God of justice. Uh, but I appreciated what he said, although I didn't include that kind of concern in my notes. I, I, I didn't have it in my notes, but I'm glad, I'm glad that he said what he said. All was good. As a young man in Chicago, he's a Muslim too, with a, he often says, it's all good, brother. <laughs> so it was all good, <laughs> brother. <laughs> uh, I understand that some persons in this area that I uh, feel a very strong friendship with, uh, Dr. Vincent Harding, and if anybody's here who can get my message to him, give him my greetings, warm greeting, greetings, brotherly greetings to him, and uh, my love, and uh, Dr. Naeem Akbar, I'm told, is in the area too, and uh, I have the same kind of awareness of, of him and friendship with him too. So please give Dr. Naeem Akbar my greetings if anyone's here who will see him. Uh, give him my greetings and tell him I did uh, get his greetings um, and uh, word that he is in the area uh, but is occupied somewhere else. So his his uh, uh, program has him somewhere else at the time. Uh, yes, yeah, and there are several others. I just wanted to make those acknowledgments. Now, Islam, the religion of Islam, is by its own language, Islam, the language, the Arabic language, Islam, is a religion of peace. And <clears throat> the Muslim is a person of peace. The name Islam comes from the word peace, or the, or the word to give peace, salama, to give peace, or peace. Salam, peace. Salam means peace. And the word Muslim also comes from the same word. And our greetings that we give all the time comes from the same word, peace. We say as-salam, as-salam alaykum, as-salam alaykum means the peace. And the name of our God is also the peace. One of his names is the peace, as-salam. God's name is as-salam, the peace. So when you say salam alaykum, you're saying peace be on you, or peace be unto you. When you say, Assalamu Alaikum, you are not only saying the peace be unto you, or the peace be upon you, you are also saying the name of God. Because God's name in Islam, one of his names is also Assalamu, the peace. 
<clears throat> yes. Um, in Islam, we have to appreciate the, God's creation, the natural world that he made. We have to appreciate the fact that that natural world that he made feeds the natural human persons he made. That natural word, world feeds us with beauty, feeds us with intelligence, it feeds us with life. The natural world is more beautiful than ugly, more peaceful than disturbed, more supportive of intelligent life than it is not. That's the natural world. So Islam begins with our recognition that the creator of the heavens and the earth made the world good. And I read the Bible, I'm a student of the Bible, I read the Bible from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation more than once. And I've studied it from Genesis to Revelation. And I appreciated seeing in the Bible where God says he made, did so much on the first day when he was creating this world. Second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, he completed it. And each day, after each day of completed, completion of that work for that day, the Bible says, and God beheld that it was good. So God is saying what I did is good. He created the world and he said it was good. Even the sixth day. <laughs> you know, he created man on the sixth day according to scripture. And uh, the Satan came in and got into the business of man and uh, brought man to fall, brought man downfall. Uh, uh, but even God does not say that sixth day is bad. In the Bible, in Genesis, when it came to the sixth day, he completed and he said, and it is good. So all God's work is good. And Muhammad the prophet said, Surely God is good, and he does not accept any but good. That is to say, you can't give God a billion dollars from, from drug sales, and he accepts it. He won't accept it. He rejects your money from illegal business. And he rejects hypocrisy. He rejects deceit. No matter how much you do for religion or for God, if you offer God something bad, he rejects it. He only accepts good. He is, as Muhammad the prophet said, peace be on Muhammad, God is good and he accepts only good. Now, a suicide bomber who's going to give God his life but look at what he's doing. He's taking his own life, which is a major sin in our religion as it is for Christians. And he's also taking the life of innocent men, women, and children. Applying the same logic that Muhammad gave us and that scripture gives us, his gift will not be accepted. He's given his life in vain. His gift will not be accepted. And God says, and also in our holy book, there are those that are work feverishly and diligently building a great thing in their name to find in the hereafter before God and the judgment that all of their work that they thought was a contribution to God will be rejected and they'll find themselves in hell. We have to be aware of these things.